Hey guys and girls, uh, this video is brought to you by Auto Analyzers. Uh, going over diagnostics today, uh, I think this is a good video for both technicians and non-technicians. Uh, for those of you who don't work on cars on a daily basis, a uh, great case study on uh, why it's so essential to get a proper analysis done uh, so that your car can be returned to you in a very reliable manner. Um, the scan tool on this car, the magic box if you will, um, did not show any codes. A common misconception out there is that you just plug in the scan tool and it tells you what the problem is. Um, I'm not going to lose my temper here, but uh, when you go to a parts store, they plug in the scan tool, give you a code. Uh, that is not an analysis. That is not a diagnostic. I just want to clear that up. What they fail to do um, is once they read the code, let's say it's P0340, they see a cam sensor, they try and sell you a cam sensor. Well, they skip the very important 20-step troubleshooting chart for that particular code and just went right to selling you a part. Um, that is a pet peeve for me, but that's a common misconception out there that they got a free analysis. Uh, at the end of the day, you got what you paid for, uh, which is nothing. Um, enough of that rant. Uh, let's get right into this uh, 03 F250. Uh, customer complaint, no start, start, stall, flickering relays, uh, dashboard going dead, a uh, whole bunch of weird electrical problems. First thing that I did um, verify there was no codes. I uh, didn't see any codes, um, nothing really to hang my hat on there. Uh, next thing I did was let me get the breakout box. Hang on. All right, sorry about that. First thing I did was plug in my breakout box, my lovely Pico breakout box. Um, plug that in when the problem was acting up. Uh, only way really to get a proper analysis done on here is get it to act up. Uh, everything else is just guesswork. Uh, customer is very understanding, seemed to really understand the fact that I need the car to act up. And that's the only way we're going to get to the bottom of this problem. Um, maybe that's why the other shops just want to deal with it. It was hard to get it to act up. The second morning I had it, I finally got it to act up. Plugged in my breakout box, uh, found that I had power and ground at the OBD link when the problem acted up. Now, it doesn't tell me very much, but it tells me something. Um, so I had good power and ground at the OBD connector uh, when it was acting up. Next step was start checking networks, and this is this is my logic here. I've got the breakout box. I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of these pins and do some simple network checks. See if I got proper voltages at the networks when this problem was occurring. Um, you can go in several different directions at that point, uh, but I I chose that direction because it was easy, and I thought that would be the first thing uh, to do. Went to pin number, let's take a look at this. Pin number seven uh, is where I first saw a problem with voltage fluctuation at the time that it was acting up uh, with my vantage meter. Okay, so this is an old vantage meter. Um, very handy. I love graphing multimeters. Um, they have newer ones, and that's great. Uh, but this thing is a small, handy, I, I, I love it. I, you know, Stampin did a great job when it comes to this Vantage. Um, I don't think there's any reason to get me a newer one. This one seems to work fine. But let me show you what I have on the screen here. Okay, so that's what I saw on the screen for pin number seven that goes to, let's see, restraints control module, uh, parking aid module, overhead console, ABS, four-wheel drive. So I saw a voltage fluctuation on that isolated network, uh, but it really I saw those modules and I think, well, that doesn't really have anything to do with the starting um, of the vehicle or the running of the vehicle. Um, so I got this, this problem here on that network, but I don't know what to do with it. Um, I don't know what to do with it because it really has nothing to do with the car starting running and staying running. So I moved back to powers and grounds. Um, at the time that it was acting up, I saw the radio. 
uh, acting funny, very erratic. I thought that's a fairly simple circuit. Let's do power and ground for the radio. Uh, so that's where I went next. Um, Take a look here. All right, I'll get better at this, I promise. All right, so fuse 11, 20 amp, goes right to the radio. Uh, that was my next check. At that, I found voltage fluctuation from battery voltage down to zero when the problem was acting up. So there is my power distribution problem right there at that fuse. Uh, very simple check. Traced it back to some fusible links. Uh, typically, once those blow, they stay blown. So I went to the junction box. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. Okay. Whoops. So that guy right there. Okay. Um, that was, took me a while to find out where that was, but that is the driver's front wheel well is where I found that. So once I found it, uh, this ain't the best picture in the world, but this is what I found. Uh, that's the connection. Not a great connection, but here's the problem. I don't know if that's the problem. I see it's a bad connection, but is it just look bad or is it really bad? Am I losing voltage there? Is that, is that the whole problem? Uh, that's a million dollar question. Is that the problem or isn't it? Once I touch it or I attempt to clean it up, I don't know if I've solved the problem or if the problem just isn't acting up anymore. So I need a way to verify that that's a problem. I haven't started this truck up at all in the morning, uh, so it hasn't been running yet. At this point, there's a couple different ways to test that. Um, I'm going to kind of show you uh, my method. It's the lazy method, uh, but I think it's a very effective method. Once you get it to act up again, you can certainly check voltage on both ends of that terminal. That's one way to do it. My fear is once I touch it, because this is where I've been before, once I touch that terminal or the wire or anywhere near that, um, I possibly can get a good connection and I've lost my measurement. Uh, so if I probe it with my pins, I'm moving the wires and I may disturb the connection. So here's my issue. How do I check that connection without disturbing it? And this is what I came up with. Um, thermal imaging tool, uh, thermal camera. I really like it because I don't have to touch it. If any circuit on the car that carries a reasonable amount of current has a bad connection, I'll pick it up with this thing. Um, so let me show you what I found when I pointed my thermal imager at that. That is my thermal image. It's not great resolution, but you get the idea. Um, I don't have the number on here, uh, but this blue area is right around 60 degrees, and this red area is right about 99, almost 100 degrees. So that, for me, is confirmation, because I've used that thermal camera enough to know that that is a very bad connection. That's a hot connection. I haven't started this truck. It hasn't run at all. There should be no heat anywhere. Um, but that is my bad connection, and that allows me to confirm uh, that that is my problem. Without having to touch it, do voltage drops, or disturb any part of the circuit. Um, so that is one tool I would definitely like to promote, uh, is that thermal imager. Um, you don't have to use that. I just like that tool because I can print it out and show the customer. Uh, this much, much cheaper tool will work just the same. It's got lasers on it, um, does a really good job. You don't need a $2,000 tool. Of course, they've come down in price quite a bit too. Uh, but that is uh, a very, very nice tool to have. I can confirm that's the problem. Uh, we made the repair, got it fixed, and the customer has been happy ever since. I know that that's a proper diagnostic because I didn't have to touch the wires. I didn't have to probe it. Um, anytime I disturb a very delicate connection like that, um, I compromise my testing, and that's why I think it's so important 
um, to take a temperature reading with a thermal camera because I can verify that's a proper uh, a proper diagnosis without having to touch it. And I think uh, you know that's something to offer anybody who's uh, looking out there for different ways to test the car, diagnostics, that sort of thing. Um, that's kind of a fun way to do it. Um, problem is it's just so expensive. Um, but again, this will do the same thing at you know a tenth of the price. So also a very good tool. Um, anytime you come across a current carrying circuit that has a bad connection, you should see some heat. Um, and that's how we know that's a bad connection. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to go over today. Um, again, the magic scan tool didn't help me at all. Everybody loves a great scan tool, but that is definitely not always the answer. Sometimes you just need to duke it out, get in there and get your hands dirty. Um, as little as possible, of course. Uh, I don't like getting my hands dirty. Um, that's why we have the thermal camera. Um, but yeah, thanks guys for watching and hopefully uh, you know you learned something today and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.